ever set us in the mysteries of its science. The natural satellite of the Earth, the Moon, and its twin, the Greenland, floats back to its orbit after each 10 centuries. Here it comes. Life is a fight for territory. The moment you stop fighting for what you believe in, what you don't want, automatically it takes space. A man who do not stand for anything will fall for everything. Let's go. Okay, um, hello everybody. Welcome to Naira Option Talk Shows, right? Today we have somebody very, very interesting, very special, very <laughs> passionate. I mean, like, I've personally spoken to him um, a couple of times, right? In fact, like, how I got to know him was because one of, somebody I knew um, sent me <clears throat> something he produced, right? And I was like, this is, this is interesting and this is like, cool, especially for a Nigerian. And so you know, we got up <laughs> and well, get here is today, right? So, um, bro, <laughs> I'll let you introduce yourself, right? So, who are you? First of all, your name, uh, what do you do? Where were you born? How was like growing up, growing up your state? Okay, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Musa Robert. It's such indeed, um, an opportunity and a privilege to hear from you. I, I can't forget like the very day when you sent a message to me, you were saying, oh, uh, it's like I once tried calling you. I, I saw a text from someone and like, who is this person? I quickly called and then it was just like, we had known for a very long time and which we now started building a relationship. So I'm so excited to see what you're doing here on Eruption. It's, it's indeed a great thing and I feel it's we really help a lot of um, young people like us and the rest also coming up. So thank you so much for the great job, for the great work. I am actually, I am Jeremiah Joshua Unom. Unom Jeremiah, that's what they call me. And uh, but my stage name, that's Jeremy Hasid. That's my name. So, and I'm a script writer and I also write comics and and um, animation and a filmmaker as well. Yeah, this whole thing is about movies and comics, animation. It started at a very tender age. I was still much more of a little boy. And then I actually wanted to, I see I see Americans, I see Hollywood specifically, you know, um, creating great characters, great work. And I was like, actually we have great stories that we need to explore. And then sometimes just take up my book and write. They want to, they want to stay in, in, in primary school towards the end of my primary school. Before I got to high school, in high school, the whole thing intensified and that's how the passion started. I write and keep it like, normally here in Hollywood, there's some kind of movies that you can act. So that was where the passion started from. And it was indeed, an, uh, let me say an ignition. The very day I spoke with Mr. Musa Obed, he he really helped me to understand that even what I'm doing, it can actually go far beyond justice borders. And I'm really grateful to be here. Okay. Nice. Uh, I hear a lot of Hollywood, Hollywood. 
we'll get to that soon. Um, <laughs> because I think, like, you are, I mean, especially like what you're doing, that, right? Um, a lot of that is not too far away. Um, but let's not let's not jump um that horse yet. So yeah, I just wanted to find out like what state are you from, right? In Nigeria. First of all, you know, are you Nigerian? <laughs> what state are you from? Uh-huh. And how was it like growing up in that state? Oh, okay. Oh, um, I'm a Nigerian. That's one. I'm from Benue State by origin, and I'm I'm a chief person by tribe. Yeah, and let me say, my dad and my mom, the ministers, yeah, preachers. My dad is a preacher. My mom is a businesswoman, and my dad spent all his life, most of his life, outside. Yeah, and um, yeah, so that's it basically. Okay, man. And, and let, talking about my groin, my groin is actually into cost. You know, say part of it. Part of it in my state and part of it outside of my state. Yes. All right. Uh, nice. But do you consider Benue place a place that you call home in this sense? It, yeah, sure, sure. To me, I feel Benue State is a home. Uh, okay. Like, like, like the Benue people were surrounded with a lot of stories. Some of them seem to meet, you know, mythologies that have not yet been properly documented, but speculated by different historians which is still, and I feel that's, that's one of the strongest, um, let me say, uh, storyline about most cultures. It's like sometimes there are missing episodes in our history. For example, you hear that they came from Dr. Congo or from Congo, or they came from, um, or they're related to people from Zulu or people from South Africa. So the whole thing, the, there, is, there is quite like, I've been able to trace my origin is quite, is a mixture. Different authors write different things. Different people tell the different things about you being a thief person. And you hearing some kind of stories like we're crossed over a snake. I mean, <laughs> very to be nice. I just try to see it in an epic way. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, okay, I mean, let's, say, let's say the stereotypes up, uh, aside for this one. <laughs> Maybe okay, I'll okay. Okay. Because like, I think every state has their own Peculiar, very superstitious, very <laughs> mythical kind of stereotype, right? Yeah. And, and sometimes I feel like the documentation was poorly written. I don't know. Or it was not even, there was no good track of it. And yeah, that's it. So I think the, we we'll kind of reference a lot of your work here, right? Um, but okay. like, I, don't want, I would just want us to talk about, first of all, this sci-fi movie, right? The one that's, got you an international award in Germany. Uh, first of all, like, what is it about you as sci-fi? <laughs> That's the first question, right? Okay. Why is, um, why is sci-fi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, we can begin with that. Like, why sci-fi? Okay, because in Nigeria, you know, like, we have, we have, a um, I don't know, should I say, you know, like, candy wood and stuff now, um, that yeah. we do and jazz, in the past, scary films, you know, with religion. <laughs> but sci-fi is like, your sci-fi is actually scientific fiction, which is not very yeah. common in Nigeria. That's true. Okay. Oh, thanks a lot for that question. You know, if you look very critical into the history of a Black man, you will discover that our, our culture was what emanated um, to the best of other cultures in the world. A black man first existed before every other race came. Yeah, that's that a man. bold statement, too. <laughs> that's a bold statement. Yeah. In, 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 in fact, what you're saying right now takes me to one of my comics called Afro Football. Afro Football was simply uh, a society in a place where you had different people, different cultures, and you had goalposts were placed because this man wanted to extend his empire and him trying to extend his empire goalpost um was just like it represented the gates into their cities and the goal was like um the aim for their fight so the fight was swords so like um let's say like a festival so at a point that i had to modify it in the modification now the play bore, anyone who wins means a person takes over that city. Then all of a sudden, the entire city was now destroyed and recreated by a philosopher into a chip. 
And out of that philosopher came every other white philosopher. Did That's you say comics. Yeah. So because why why am I saying this? The reason is is that the African man is so powerful that we are ingrained in a high degree of spirituality. And sci-fi, you know, sometimes you say you cannot mix spirituality with science fiction, but science is simply a use of physical principles that are based physical principles. And that's why it deals with the laws of physics, right? To, to actually take man to an advanced state. And that's why as, as some time ago, if you tell a man that you can fly, that will look so impossible. But physics attempts to approach these principles from a physical standpoint. And from this physical standpoint, it brings out the reality of it. But if, even if we try to look into it deeply, you'll notice that the mystery that goes in there is quite still beyond the human understanding. So the African man, we have been, we, we, we are so enriched with so much stories that we are not far away from science fiction. I, I believe it is the context mm-hmm. that we try to place it in mm-hmm. because we don't really know how to translate our spirituality into something that is having a physical parameter that we can actually apply. And that's why science deals with proofs, meaning that you tried and it works and, it, and then you prove it and prove it again on this no longer a hypothesis. It becomes something real that every other person, as long as you follow this principle, that's how it will work. So, so Jerry, like if I understand you pr- um, properly, right, from what you just said with this, your sci-fi is deeply influenced by spirituality. It's deeply influenced by spirituality. Saying to it that, just take a look at the advancement of man and the African people were not far away from it. And let's talk about civilization. It all first started in Egypt. Civilization first started with a black man. So, as cutting out sci-fi from, from our genre of movies is cutting out an aspect of our lives that is so enriched but hidden that we've always been actually cultured in that way, but we didn't really know how to translate it. The white people were able to approach life from a physical standpoint and they were able to apply these things to physical parameters, physical issues, and they solved problems. Meanwhile, the black man was just shut in the world of spirituality and witchcraft. That's why it's called a craft. One of my movie that is it's a feature film in the next, like we're planning for it in the next 10 good years because the reason is we want to let raise funds. And by the time things go out well, or it's, it's called black craft, it simply talks about that, that witchcraft is, that's why it's called a craft. What do you do with the craft? The craft is what you use your hand to, how skilled you are. So it means it's a skill. So when, when you try to look at it, there is actually spirituality itself can be understood just the way science can be understood. So I really wanted that part, that, that part of us to re- let, 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 let us have it plain in movies. Most of the science fiction that you watch in most of the movies that we see today if we take a look at it, there's always also a mixture of magic, little magic in it. There is known that you won't see a, a part of magic. And I been right from time when I was little, I grew up and I came to understand something about my own self. And that is, I am, I have a very high episodic memory, meaning that, meaning that I can, everything about me, I visualize it. And sometimes it's as if I'm going out of my mind, even the friends I have, the things I talk about, things about the universe, things about. So I was like, okay, I can actually, we can have these things in our movies and we won't stand a better chance because we have the best of stories in the world. In fact, from mm. recite, it's like, like the movie Zena was actually influenced by an African story. That's Queen Amina, the warrior princess. Mm-hmm. So the white people are, there's from, from afar, they use their lens to also steal from other culture and they try to put a blend to the story and then put in a universal, like a universal appealing approach. You know, most Hollywood movies always take a universal appealing approach, meaning 
they will put a part, take a part from your culture, take a part from this other person's culture, bring their people, bring their people, and then they make a story that will make a universal hit. Mm, universal so, Studios, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now, and our stories, like I said, our stories are losing out day by day. So we need we need that aspect. Let's talk about our young folks, our kids. Our kids are knowing too little about themselves, too little about their culture. Why? Because we have not been able to stand up to the expectation of who we ought to be in the 21st century, yet even with our stories. And that's why it seems like the Western world have more influence on us than we do on our own selves. And that's disastrous. Our kids are hooked on more of comics, animation, stories that are more of the white culture. So they sell their gender, they sell and influence them. And that's why we need to also as a people begin to create things like that. In fact, that sci-fi was just like an experimental sci-fi. Because for the real comics, we're planning for it to hit this year. That's where you see how we, we put the flanny, the, everything to explain what really happened. The, the, we'll give that, um, um, that cyborg life. The cyborg can actually speak all the Nigerian tribes. But you won't see that in the short film. Why? Because they, they, our, our sponsors and everything, we, have to, we did everything by ourselves. And like we wanted something different. And that's why I met, I respect this guy, Jay Knows. Jay Knows is a guy doing so much. I met with him and it's like, bro, can you do this? Because I, I approached several studios and other filmmakers that were like, no, they can't do such a thing. And he said, why not? Let's give it a try. Hmm. And that's how we started. Okay, so like, I have a question here, like two questions, actually, from what you said, right? Um, the first okay. question regards, um, you know, like your assertion that um on stories right basically yes. what we can say from what you said with that was that you know stories is the medium for influence so if you can control the stories um you'll be more influential so the more stories you can push out and the more stories people absorb the more influence you can have in their lives yeah so oh, let like, me explain that point oh nice nice and then like so I wanted to ask a question right, about sci-fi, um, what you said, especially like, because you said the word cyber, right? And like your, your, <clears throat> your short film, um, the sci-fi short film, right? For me, it was like really interesting because of different reasons. One of the reasons why for me it was very interesting was that I could, like the desert, right? Or like yeah. what was the desert at that point is a very, so any Nigerian looking at that, can be able to tell this is Nigeria and one or the other, right? So different states have that kind of view, if that makes sense, right? A bit more, yeah. not so plain, just the setting in itself, right? And then your inclusion yeah. of something so um, different, right? So futuristic yeah. in such a very quote unquote primitive setting, right? Yeah. It did something to me in the sense of, you know, it was, I mean, because we're used to, um, maybe you know, like a, a Tony Stark in a <laughs> in a building, right? In a skyscraper. Yeah. So as I was saying, right? Um, yeah. the setting of your sci-fi was very interesting because it was a stark contrast to the regular sci-fi setting. And what I mean by this, right, is let's take for instance uh, Marvel, right? I don't know if people caption that as sci-fi, anyways. But like, let's just imagine it's Tony Stark, right? Because I mean, Tony Stark is a representation of a cyborg in one way or the other, um, right? He's human, but he has, you know, this, um, should I say, technological or very robotic element to him, right? Um, anyways, yeah. like we know Tony Stark in a skyscraper, right? We know Tony Stark yeah. in like a well-developed setting. But then like what you did was to bring the future into 
a setting that was quote unquote primitive, right? And that is yeah. interesting. And it's particularly interesting for me, especially like as regards when you're talking about spirituality and like the African yeah. spirituality in essence, right? Because obviously yeah. when you know when you are making those references, um, it is in a point whereby you know, even before um you know formal colonization started and you know we started to yeah. um black people started to be ruled by outsiders right um so yeah. that's the spirituality and you know in that sense they were very you know quote-unquote primitive places as well right and then like from yeah. what you said right and then bringing the cyborg in your own film just brings about a very <laughs> interesting perspective for me in the sense that you know yeah. a sci-fi can pre-exist or you know just to put it like um there's always been sci-fi <laughs> yeah, right yeah um but we have never really materialized it if that makes sense that's true that's true that's true like there's like there's always been sci-fi always just the way you have sometimes the african people running away like maybe you have a spirit calling you now like <laughs> or like all scary things happening to you at night and all that with this all this been this all has been sci-fi so the next question yeah um so i just asked like also about like when you stated cyborg like um so i mean i think our generation right will be able to understand these things better right but then probably like the older generation trying to tell them that you know this is a cyborg right and they're like ah, what is a cyborg what is this <laughs> right or just trying to explain to people who have not been as exposed um to to maybe films right maybe the matrix or something like that or um um you know just just exposed to cyborg related sci-fi with cyborgs right um how do you how is somebody able to understand your film if they do not understand the reference okay fine yeah um and that's the more reason why we need we need more resources for such luxury or uh, not not really too much but we do and that will really come in the comics for example we'll make the cyborg look human and we just know that this is a computer assistant assistant the guy and he can speak all nigerian tribes that's one mm -hmm. so we want to make him er, like attached in our movies, that's why we'll bring in culture. But each cyborg that we have is relatable to a certain culture. If it's like, mm. like, like for Twin Moon, for the comics that we are working on currently right now, like I told you, the first that stuff we did was just was testing the waters. This very one, what we 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 created an emotional attachment between this guy and the cyborg in such a way that. The cyber is now a brother to him. He's the only child. And his parents were a scientist, one, the dad who lived all his life outside and studied um, robotics in, in Japan. So then the mom started making uh, mechatronics. Now, these two people coming in, they now, they now pitch to the government that why not that um, uh, this will be the very first time that we'll have, um, and he was the best. So at a point when he wanted to even leave Japan, it was quite a war. It was quite a tussle. So we we now get a cyber. Something later happened that died, but the project went on that they were able to build a space station around uh, what do you call the Gulf of Guinea. There's Atlantic Ocean within the boundary, that Lagos boundary. So his the son was what he left. The son, the mom had challenges to give breath to have kids. So she and the husband decided to create someone who will be like a junior brother to our main character, Hazlan. Okay, and now seeing that, we had to put in a diversity of this Hazlan not been able to speak other tribes and communicate with people, some people. So this cyborg contains all the characteristics that can make, that can make life easy and information easy for Hazlan all across the whole Nigeria, meaning all tribes, the cyborg can understand, can speak. The cyborg can help him even cooking like native, like uh, let's say 
some kind of native herbs, like old Yoruba stuff, Igbo stuff that people have heard about, maybe a plant or something, an old folk tale. Whenever he's bored, he brings it up. And some things that happened in the 90s, some things that happened even during Biafra, we're connecting all those stories. Then even some like Nigerian, uh, what do you call them? This, this songs. Uh, our traditional songs, you know, our kind of blues, even play that. Oh, please, can I just um, listen to that? Yeah. And then you see the cyborg brings it up for him. So I believe that with this, most people will be able to connect to the story. Just imagine things happening long time ago. He can even bring a hologram of what Femi Kuti did because in it now, maybe I might even later because there's a story I have is called 4D. That's that's the story that um uh that that story simply focuses on a machine, a 4D machine that was created for people to uh for Africans to float within the four eras that we have, and that's the pre colonial era all the way, and all of them had names. So people in the present world can meet people uh in the other world, like. Because these different eras, we see the African people, especially the Nigerians, evolving. And each era had an, an advantage and also had a disadvantage. So the people in the most advanced era will have to go back to interact with the people of the previous era for them to correct certain things, to make themselves better. So it's like you're having four different dimensions of world colliding together and real life stories from real icons that we had. For example, Felakuti. This one, I even wrote as a short as a short film, but we've not acted it yet. So I I, I just mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. it's 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 it is going to be a way to reconnect us back to our history. Most of our movies disconnect us from our history. They only focus on the most current state of what's happening, and I feel that we are losing out too much on those informations. Yeah, Jerry, like I like this is very interesting, right? Because first of all, you spoke about like we have to recontextualize what a cyborg means, right? So yeah. I mean, it might mean a different thing. For example, um, when we're watching a DC comic, right? Um, but then like yeah. when we're thinking about in Nigeria, right? We have to redefine it, right? Maybe redefine. even give a traditional name or something so that people understand Thanks. or or, or I... something, right? So I mean, and then you know, eventually, it's not lose. Um, the cyborg in the actual sense of the word, like in the way everybody understands it, such that, you know, an outsider um, who knows what a cyborg is, right? Let's imagine a French person coming and now watching a recontextualized um, cyborg in a Nigerian story, in a Nigerian movie, right? doesn't even really understand what that person is because that person has been so integrated into the culture and into like in the, the mindset of, of, of the people. Um, mm. Mm, right and and like this is not just what you recently said now i think it's so interesting how basically what you're trying to do right is to connect the times at the end of the day the times mm. yeah it's, it's yeah posterity and history together <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's a combination of both that's how i see um what you're trying to do um, i don't know do you want exactly. to see more <laughs> and then maybe maybe I'm going to see you in the future and over to be like Jerry I'm coming for you you be the you understand? my hologram will meet you <laughs> my hologram will meet you there <laughs> oh my god we just see some of these politicians there too and how, how they tackle their time you know it will be interesting it will be very interesting how they're trying to we see the modification both in the ladies and the men. What really happened to the woman? You know, what about our old women as of those days? If if you look at it, um, we're beginning to have more marriage chaos in the most recent times than recorded in the in in the previous years and eras that we had as African people. Why? Because of of an extensional influence of the Western world. So we see the advanced Africa, which is the last era, trying to reconnect back to the old. So 
the storyline is so broad that we can go in and out all the time. We can also have drama in the sci-fi. <laughs> That's how mad it's going to be. We can have drama in the sci- sci-fi. How married people, young ladies of this advanced age and the last, how, how, why, why, why did we have more successful marriages in the last eras than we're having it now? It's going to be really, really engaging. Yeah, I'm sure like somebody listening to us at this point is like, what are these two people <laughs> talking about? <laughs> like, oh, God. Um, but, but I'll just say like, uh, you know, to, to get the context, right, just watch um, Jerry's film on YouTube, right? Um, so if you are, so I'll just say like, if you are listening to this on Spotify or wherever else that is not YouTube, just go to the episode on YouTube and check the description box. I'll put the link um, to your, your sci-fi there so that people can watch it, right? I won't be as confused <laughs> um, oh, as they are well. listening to this. Oh, um, wow. But, but let's talk about um, basically being a cin- cinematographer in Nigeria now. Like, what okay. are the challenges you face? Um, you know, what are the benefits, right? If there are benefits in your perspective, and what are the challenges that you face? Okay, yeah. Thanks. Um, you know, being a cinematographer in Nigeria, it, it, it requires a whole lot because, number one, they they the support the support is not coming directly from the head and that i mean from the government like some countries that you have the government really pouring a lot into entertainment and that being said i mean precisely the movie and the film industry because i'm sure that we've not yet been able to wake up to the call of how much of importance movie can be of of an influence on the people you you basically see even this Femi and Kev, the rest of them they're making movies out of passion out of passion they sponsor the movies by themselves just a few bodies in the country that are actively putting in so much into entertainment and this has to do with more individuals even the so-called experts are not well paid if you're in your industry. I don't want to really spill that out so much. They are paid, like, randomly, averagely, they are paid okay, right? But they get, they get money sometimes. It's not the, more, the money they make for themselves uh, as an individual to also push in the product more is not really from the industry itself. Maybe it's through endorsement and through all that. That's one of the major challenges is actually resources. You don't really have enough on it. Now, let, let, let's even talk about um, the first movie, uh, the first Nigerian movie that was ever produced. That was um, Palava. And that was produced by the, the Palava. That's the name. Uh, and that was in 1926. And it was directed by Geoffrey Bacchus. That was one of the first Nigerian cinema movies. As of then, we have the white people who were also involved in it. Then, you know, and you, you would take a look at these games. For example, you can see a normal uh, Western movie. Let's say, let me just use the word Hollywood. Yeah. You, you can see that they pump in millions, sometimes even up to a billion into their movies and they make it back. So it's one of the basic and the fundamental challenge that we are facing. And that has to be corrected. But I really thank God for the new generation coming up that are doing well. Like you have other movies like Blood Sisters, King of Boys. Some of our movies are making it to Netflix. They are getting an international um, attention. So I feel that over time, and let's say, yes. Secondly, is that the the movie industry is full of compromise. I am sorry to say, but I feel so. I, I let them notice that why why being on set sometimes, I let them notice, and also from all the gurus that have been in there when I meet with some of them, I let them notice that sometimes it's just in the most recent times that you have it that Nigerians are now beginning to pay attention 
to a well-scripted show. Sometimes they just come in there and they improvise. And that's why the movies don't come out intelligently created. We, mm. we, so, we so, you understand? so when you say it's compromised, is in the sense of quality? The quality of the story and secondly, of the cost, the budgeting. And that first I spoke about it. You have very few people who are ready to, to put in money into movies. People like Ramsey and the rest, they're doing it for the passion. Hmm. So, like, how do you think, right, in this sense, like, Nigerian um, scriptwriters, cinematographers, right, can be able to make this something that people are willing to put their money into, right? So they, they yes. see it as a, an industry that is very valuable. Yeah. Like, how do you think, like, we can make that turn around? And that has nothing to do. We can go outside of this. Like Hedgecock said, I, I keep saying, because Hedgecock is one of the greatest um, uh, uh, movie makers of all time. He said that it's all about the script and the script and the script. You know, Hollywood got it right from the start. We were first video beings when man was created. In fact, video communication lasted for like 32,000, uh, how many thousand years before written before written um um written language or yeah written skill was now introduced so we've always been visual beings people what we see sticks better than what we sometimes hear our sight works with what we see so mm. also with what we hear and what we perceive now <clears throat> for Hollywood, they've always invested so much in their script writers because these are creators. You see them as creators. The director, to me, the director is just an inspector. It's like you come out here now as an artist, you sketch out an entire landmass, and you'll be like, okay, this is what I want to have on this building. You have it printed in your mind. Then you translate it into a template, maybe on your system, and or maybe you do it manually on a board. Then after that, you give it out to the builders, the engineers, the walk there to the site, the geos of, you know, and then... So the actors now serve as engineers in this sense. That's, that's what they're doing. They're just taking a play. Meanwhile, mm. the director... The director of a script is simply an inspector, ensuring that the, init the, the plan laid out must be carried out exactly. Mm, okay. Exactly. And that's why the creation process of a script takes a lot of process. Like, like um, let's say, like the Black Panther people watch, like most in most interviews when I get to listen to, some scripts that we watch, most good movies that we watch and we celebrate, they were was written by one script writer. You still have dialogue specialists, people who specialize in dialogue. They go through the script, they analyze it. If 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 a script writer is to write about, uh, let's say, his story, he's to write about um, a medical doctor, or let's say it has to do with something that is medical related, he would take his time and study about medicine, even meet medical students. Then after that, they try to check if it's accurate, professional. It goes through all the screening before they even talk about table read, then bringing in the actors, bringing in. Now, the job of the director is just to ensure that this thing comes out well. But you have it here that sometimes our stories are really half-baked and then people will just, let's just have it quickly. Let's have it quickly. It's not even mm -hmm. about the low budget. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. today, I think I, I, I stumbled across some movies and I love them. Like one is called Fire Starter. Fire Starter is just a movie. Sorry, it's not a Nigerian movie. It's a Hollywood movie, but just a very few characters that were involved in it. The other one was, I think, is it Back to Net? It's just a school that focuses on high school students and how they were able to, I'm like, wow, our kids don't even have this on, on screen. And it was just, just a few characters used. So sometimes it's not really in how you, once you have a good story, even if you spend $1,000 to create that story and you manage all that you have, it will still look like you used a million dollars 
So it's all about a quality story, even with very few limited characters and a little amount put into it. You'll be so shocked as long as that amount can bring the story. The reason for high budget is just because that movie, all that it required to bring it to life, it is, equi- it is actually equated to that amount, that expense. But if I have a good story and the total cost to make that story is just $200, I am telling you, and you that have not to a good story and you decided to pump in me and then it's equivalent to a million US dollars, I bet you this movie that is having a very good story narrative and is perfect. And the cost that it would take you to create such a story is equivalent to $200. By the time we are done, the two people are done. They use the required, like, you know, the required equipments for this short story, or let's just say, yeah, for this good story, that is what $200. And for this other story that is not too good, is having a lot of lapses and use a million US dollars. By the time we're done, that movie that its exact required amount, $200, it will look like they used a billion, in fact, millions of dollars to spend on it. And it will generate millions of dollars. Meanwhile, the movie that you used a whole lot of money to try to create and put out there might even make less when it hits the box office. And people mm. are like, what's the meaning of this? What was the meaning of this? So... <laughs> Once you have a good story and the, the summation of the amount, the equivalence of it is not even about the cost right now. It's about the required amount to bring it to life. It's like you're trying to build a house. If you need 300 blocks to get to raise that building up to the top, why use 500 blocks? So simply, any story that is told well Whatever is required to bring it to life, that is the resources. Even if it's little, it makes it magnificent on the screen like they have spent a whole lot on it. And I feel Mm. that that's where we have to actually put in a, 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 once we have the good cameras, have the good location, and you have the directors, they're all doing the job. I feel this whole problem will be solved. We have to really focus on the story. Like the most recent movies, uh, movie that uh, was released of recent, and I, I really liked the movie, and that was Blood Sisters. A lot of people liked the movie. Why? The story, guess how many people that wrote that story? Six. You know that these guys, they took their time to understand it. They didn't rush it. It was not about um, the, whole, the whole credits going to one individual. It's about people coming together why don't you have one engineer building or one, one, one person building an entire skyscraper? Why do you have several people working on the project? Why do you have an artist, as an artist, an architect? Why do you have engineers? Why do you have builders, bricklayers? Why do you have them all put together? Meaning it's a component and that's why you have actors. Actors still need to play the role. So when you're looking at this as a movie script, a movie script is a guideline for for directors, for actors, for uh, the crew, the production crew team, for the producers, for the executives, for them to know what to do, the costume designer. So a script writer is like you're a god commanding different elements to be put together and you're putting men to work. So Jerry, like why do you think, I mean, like with the way you've explained, right? Like directors and script writers and like how important they are. Why do you think we still give like so little recognition? Is it because they are so behind the scenes that people don't like, um, really value them? Because, for example, me, um, I just I, I got into like Christopher Nolan. Oh my god, right? Um, because you know he does like kind of my cup of tea, and yeah. now I don't even care about Nolan's like who acts in Nolan's films. All I care about like is watching Nolan's movies, right? Because I know what to expect from that guy, right? But like, why do you think, um, you know, in Nigeria precisely, people do not even know 
I mean, maybe now, right, the Kemi Adesiba, um, you know a bit of names. But, like, why do you think, like, it was hard for people, like, people don't remember names. They don't remember names of directors or scriptwriters. Like, it just goes blank. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that question. Well, why I feel that is, it's simply because we don't really have, um, there's been no, let's say, a well-pronounced platform that really um, promotes them. Like right now we have so many groups, ISA, Stage 32. We have, and these guys, they're script writers, they're directors, they're known for one thing. They're, they, they have been recognized. And, but the good thing about it is of recent right now, Nollywood are, are giving attention to script writers because seeing the success of their stories now, employing this professionalism, they've started giving recognition a little bit. But we need to push it a bit further in a sense like having some, uh, what do you call, um, some, some, let's say some award nights specifically just to recognize certain script writers, script writers competitions, you know, you, you, you hold it, okay. And then you try to put it, uh, sometimes, I feel it's mainly about it's mainly about the announced repart. Having a platform that makes these guys come together. We are there need to be an association for that. Yes, there are associations for it. But it's just in the most recent times, like I'm saying, because the last time I checked on Rock, I saw a movie was made. And when the movie was done, this they, they gave a little screen time for the script writer to talk about the movie, like making movie reviews. Why do you have white people having that? It talks, it begins to sell that script writer out there that, wow, because for you to have such a good story, it's all the actors, the actors are just playing out. They're just trying to bring and flesh that word to life. So whoever is behind this, my God, he must be crazy. If, 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 if you forget it, take a look at it now. Whenever you watch a Hollywood movie that is so outstanding sometimes when you're done, even after enjoying it, once you watch out for the name, you'll be like, who, who, who wrote this movie? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's mainly for those who are so keen and already into, into, into movies. Like, I mean, that are filmmakers or a movie making is part of their career. Hmm. But, but for the Nigerians, let's say for the African community, it's just in the most recent times that platforms are now giving, like making movie reviews, you know, it's like on big channels, like African magic, like rock, a rock, rock TV station. I, when I saw that, I was so excited. And they also had a place where the actors were now making reference back to the script writer. So there should be time for reference making. When all the actors, once they have a good movie, once all the actors are done, they should talk about the script writer. They should talk about the script. They don't say, I really love the script. Meaning they're registering something in the mind of people that this beautiful thing they saw out there, someone created it. And whoever that person is, they now get to, okay, that name sticks, it registers in their mind. So I feel okay. these are the ways. Having more okay. campaigns, having uh, what you call just, uh, yeah, having more campaigns, and then in those campaigns, what are you? What what are we trying to do? We'll be we'll, we'll be recognizing directors, uh, script writers, and then movies that have made it to Netflix, like then giving them more of awards, recognizing them, putting them on those channels. I feel that's one of the ways that this can work for people to really appreciate the act, like the people behind this act and this works. All right. Um... Uh, thanks for that, right? I think <clears throat> just the recognition appreciation, right? I think is something that you know it sounds very it sounds very easy to do until it's time to do it, right? You know, like me thinking, <laughs> it's, just, ah, it's not just give them awards, Org ah, organize oh. events now. Events, events, <laughs> events, events are plenty for Nigeria. Just carry one, and then you know, give guys. But obviously, like you know, there's just so much into 
making that happen, right? The selection process, who gets what, yeah. based on what yeah. metric, right? and then you start to see the complication. Um, but I think, yeah. you know, like, I think, yeah, I agree with you that, um, you know, directors and script writers, right? Um, and I think, you know, if, if the director is not the script writer, I think it has to be specifically differentiated, the, the awards, yeah. right? Okay. Okay, okay, that being said, we have what is called director writer. Some director writer, like Quentin Tarantino, he's a director writer. There's some directors we have, like Kemi and the rest, you know, as, as a Kemi, oh, yeah, okay. is he, uh, Femi, um, this, this, the lady that made this King of Boys, King of Boys, um, okay, you can Those see. Yeah, some of them are producers and directors. Kemia Detiba, she's the director mm-hmm. of this of this of this movie. And but precisely what I'm trying to say is like someone like Quentin Tarantino, who wrote Desperado. Those are actually my mentors. He is a director and a writer. So mm-hmm. they write their movies and they still direct their movies. Mm, okay. Meanwhile, some people only write and they don't direct. Oh, so if the director writer writes and the movie, it means he gets recognition for the movie and also gets for directing the movie. Because after mm-hmm. writing the script, whatever the director does can affect the quality of your script. He can decide to water down and uh, adulterate your script and it will look um, like veggies at the end of the day, like a vegetable at the end of the day. That is sour. So the best thing is when you have two people who are competent at their work, the director will bring out the beauty of that script that you, the writer, have. So even after having a beautiful story and your director messes up the story, people won't see it well. So you will not even be recognized. And that's why mm-hmm. recognizing the script writer goes in hand with recognizing the director. And it's a very big bonus when it's all coming from a director writer, meaning he wrote the, the script and at the same time he directed the script. Nice. And now, nice. And, now, and now that being said, you were talking about how can we be more recognized? That's an, a very important question. Like I can tell you that we don't really have a database that we have scripts. Yes. All the movies that we have, where you watch, there is no database for it. But the white guys have so many. You have a bridge script. You have, uh, is he, what is that again? So many libraries, online databases, like a database that contains written, already made movies and their scripts. Mm -hmm. That is the way to also promote themselves, which we are not doing. And this, we don't need a whole lot of people a group of scriptwriters can come together and say, this is what I want, or even an individual. All the movies that we've made, let us have a collection. That's to tell you, we make, we make so many movies a year, but just very few movies that are actually good and outstanding. Now imagine if you have a large collection of this, people who are coming into, in, into movie writing, new scriptwriters, newbies, they have to read a script to get so good at it. It's like milk, you taking yeah. milk. So the more you read script, the more you get better on how to be more artistic. You see how other people are able to express themselves. Director, writers are able to write shorts. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. And I feel this has nothing to do with... Uh, this has nothing to do with the producers, the executives, the actors. It has all to do with now the script writers. What are we doing in the country? Do we have a body that we can take our scripts... The, the, the executive producers, they have nothing to do with that. They have nothing to lose. They've gotten their money. They've gotten their fame. Their movies are there. The directors, their movies are there. You know? Mm-hmm. But, but it's such a pain that at the end of the whole thing, your work has no database that it can be referenced to. For example, script writers out there don't only make money after being paid for that job or making royalties from that movie as it keeps making sales. They also make money from their script because there's some site, there's certain top-notch movies that you cannot have access to until you pay for them. 
Yeah. yeah so it's a source of it's a source of income that we are denying it's, ourselves to. Do that we're denying ourselves to? Obviously, it is. That's your mm. own book. That's like your own royalty. It's like a script writer, your script, your movie script is you're an author. In fact, you're the author and finisher of that world. <laughs> That's what it means. So if that is not there, if you're not still making spontaneous lifetime royalties from it, then you're failing. When you have authors who just reach thousands of people and you know it, a movie for like, there was a course I took for free and that course was adapting novels to movies. And we, we talked about uh, Half of a Yellow Sun. Half of a Yellow Sun, out of the time when the book was released, it made lots of sales. But when the movie got into the mainstream, what happened? It made more sales and it had more views. And we live in a world where people don't have time to read, but you can compress all that on screen. Why? Most times novels just focus on what's in your head, but scripts and movies visualizes the whole and entire thing. So, Chim, uh, uh, the author of that book made his money from that royalty. And the book being adapted, he still made his money. That's one. Now, imagine the script of that same, someone else who wants to open, like, just imagine if you have, uh, let's say, half of a yellow son, that's this movie script, not now the book, is $20. After watching the movie, as the script writer, like, let me read how it was written. Because how it's written, you watching, you enjoy it, but as a script writer, other script writers will also want to read, even normal readers. There are some people that just proofread through scripts. We just want to read through it, and they'll have to pay that $10. Now imagine you have 10,000 people all over the world, not in one month, let's say in just one month, I'll say an entire year, purchase that. You've made an extra box. Mm -hmm. That's a lifetime royalty that we're still denying ourselves of. So it's, mm. it's, it's, it's a whole big thing. Like if I talk about this, it's like, my God. Yeah, and I can see that. Are really, yeah, very, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, it's tricking you. Like, you know, when you have to tell it's like, <laughs> it's, it's a bad inside my soul. Now. And like, ah, it's uncomfortable. But yeah, I think, you know, um, I don't know. I've just been able to hear so many um, probably problems, right? Uh, loopholes in our, um, in our movie industry as a whole. But like guys, I just want us to shift to the positive side because I mean, um, you have won an international award for you for a movie. And so I just wanted like for you to just explain the whole story about that, right? And the experience and the feeling and why that was important okay. to you. Okay, fine. Yeah, thanks. Uh there was actually um the title of that movie was Tom and Sam. It all started with um a, a lyric video. So, and I'm on Facebook groups with different filmmakers. One of the filmmakers, he was a German man, Claudio Diaries. Of recent to he won one award from Hollywood. And we even, we even spoke yesterday too as well, concerning a few movies that we would like to collaborate to make together. And it all first started as a lyric video. He just sent me a message that, I, I like the lyric video. Why not? Come on, let's make this a movie. That was in 2020 during the COVID period. It was just simply about a story about two guys, one Tom, one Sam. The both of them were rejected folks living in Berlin, Germany. And, and one other person felt like he noticed because the news of the COVID infection was spreading all over the internet, all over the world. And people were dying. And he felt like the symptoms were all similar to that news. And prior to that time, he had traveled to China. It is most likely that he will have it. So he, his friend got so sick. Uh, pneumonia symptoms were very high. Cough. The both of them were infected. And they felt like the best way for them to do it is not for them to die. They've suffered so much. And the backstory we had is that his parents once died to a nuclear war. You know, no, no, his his parents were his both. That is, um, Sam's parents were both scientists that died to a nuclear war. 
between mm-hmm. America and uh, between, between America and Russia. And he was raised by the aunt. And the aunt, too, something later happened to her. She got sick. She was the only one taking care of him. She had a very bad love life. And then she gave up. So he grew up being acquainted more with artwork. He was an artist. The other person was a dancer. He acts so much like a girl, you know. And now they felt like the only way for them to numb the pain Meanwhile, the other guy who was a dancer, the dad owns a club and the dad divorced the mom. And now he's staying with the step and, and the dad wants him to, to go in for his science course, but he wants to be a dancer and that is against it. The dad is a harsh and a rash man. So he decided not he's to stay with the dad. <laughs> you know, like this one was a complete, yeah, like our African parents, yes. But he, he you know, this tough man, for someone to own a motel, you should know what that yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was the kind of man he was. Now we can see that he was far away living with this other man and all of them had conflicting perspective of life. So it was like, one, let's just crash on the crowd. Let's spread this virus. Then let's know that we're not living alone. We're all dying with so many people. We take them alongside with us. So that was how the whole story concept came. I wrote a short film. And we sent it, they acted it. And then from there, it got an award. It got like two different awards. It was even sent to me in one of my, um, like my course is even going to be out soon. I'm planning for it. People from US are also going to come in and also in Nigeria, like good producers and directors. And guess what? It's absolutely free. So, but. Oh, uh, you like one of my- <laughs> <laughs> oh, Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That's good. Now, the, the, the interesting part of it was when I was sent what I was like, wow, this is incredible from Berlin. Oh, you also like, this, this is really amazing. They got it. And that was from there. I was now later contacted by director Claudio. He asked me a question that can I just have a low budget feature film and a low budget feature film should range about because how we calculate it is one page a page is one minute. So if you have a movie of two hours, it means that's 120 minutes. So if I have a movie of one hour, that's like 60 pages. It was like, okay, can I actually have it very, like, can I make this out possible? That he, that he wants as low budget as possible because he wants to sponsor the movie himself. After we won an award with this short film, that let me write a feature film for it. I wrote a feature film and I have the script with me because the moment I start uploading it to my database, my students will have access to all my scripts. All my scripts are, are well scripted. They're all written. Oh, there's some that I have that are even unproduced, so many. So I wrote a full movie of just two people and these two people, it lasted for about 72 pages, which if we took if we're going to put it together, that's more than one hour. Everything that's one hour, 20 minutes. Only two people in a movie. That would be very interesting to watch. <laughs> because the dialogue so, or the menini has to be very, very good. Very, it was. And it, it had little comedy. A little comedy in it. But when I sent it to him, he was so happy. He loved the script. He converted it into German. So I didn't really know what he did with it. Maybe he sold it, but he did not produce it. It's like he sold it out. And, you know, I was just coming up there. And, and that's why the business part of you being a scriptwriter is something that you have to be, you have to understand. Like here, here sometimes you're on the paid. You all know the problems that we have here, but at the same time, you just need to know the business. And we can talk about that here. The business part of being a scriptwriter is really, really, it's easy or tough, but you have to be smart. You have to set yourself up. Mm. So I think people, it, people that are interested in the business aspect can just follow you to your free course, right? Um, which I am very sure in so months or years will not be free anymore. Uh, <laughs> right, it's because... just this one. 
And the good thing is we have someone from Lion Media in US, a producer and executive will be around. Like the cost is going to be so practical that it's my own methods. You know, sometimes you have a lot of people going over to watch so many videos, read so many books. I have done all that. It's a shortcut for, you, for anybody who wants to write a movie script. It's just a five days course. Then after that five days, mm -hmm. The remaining two, three days, you'll be pitching your stories and you'll be meeting industry gurus. I'm bringing in uh, Cambria Young. She's going to be that's from US. And here I have Inem. Inem, she's a writer of um, uh, Before, uh, is it, is it? Yeah, Before Valentine. She has her movies on cinema. So imagine you're having this for free. The only thing, but you know, everything needs to come with a cost. It's just for you to follow everybody on the social media handles. And each day you'll be sending your emails because we're going to take you from an idea to a script, meaning from the first day you have to start after each video, you send emails and will reply immediately. And you and they also have access to directors who will also help them and give them tips in case for those who want to self-produce their own movies. And these are people that have an outstanding record. Like the guy who shot this, uh, the Twin Moon, has done movies for people on MTV based like Terry the Rap Band. He also said that Jerry, I'm going to be live and I'll and I would love to give them this information for free. <laughs> hmm. I mean, like this so, sounds it sounds very unreal, right? Uh, it sounds <laughs> unreal. <be> right? <laughs> no, it's it's just I just I actually want what we want is we we're, we're not taking in too many people, just 200 students. Why? I want to be able to mentor them, to monitor them, and to expose them. After that, some, some of them will have opportunity that will also expose them to other content creators that already have lots of views. For those who are writing comedy, this thing, and right there, they can have their stories pitched. But the only thing is we have control over the stories, meaning they make their stories, we'll help guide them, we'll look into it. We have, we have critical thinkers who help adjust their stories because story is not the one man's perspective. That's the mistake some writers make. You can't have a good story looking from one eye. You need different eyes to help you look at it differently. So we're doing all that. People who don't, you don't even need to know a thing about a script, but after this fight, you'll be able to write a movie. And some people feel that, you know, some people feel that, um, how do I get ideas? Ideas are not a problem. In that course, I will show you how to get ideas within a twinkle. Because it happens to me that way. And I feel that whatever is caught can be taught. Uh -uh. Hey, Jerry is spitting bars. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> caught can be taught. Uh, that's how yeah, I so, Oh, so he's saying he's spitting bars. No, <laughs> real. Because it's something that happens to me. Stories flow to me at ease. And I have to, I have to sit back to observe myself. And I noticed that everybody has a story. You don't even need to know how to write. But as long as you want to have a movie made, once you take the course, you can do it. Not even you can. Alongside we're guiding you through each day, there'll be taxes. You have to do those taxes. It's for your own. At the end of that, you'll have a short, it's for a short film. And before we now go to inter, into our intermediate course, then advanced course. Mm. Under a closed mentorship. All right. I'm sure like when, I'm sure, um, you know, by the time this video is, um, this, this recording, right, is published to everybody, um, once Jerry launches the course, we'll just send the link and attach it as well. Um, exactly. so that So that people can have access to it. But, you know, yeah. Jerry, because like of our time, we're wrapping up soon. But I just wanted to get your thoughts, first of all, like, what do you feel like being Nigerian? Like, what does that mean to you? that I am in Nigeria or that you are in Nigeria in this sense, right? And how do okay. you think um, you have a role in kind of building or making a better society that is a Nigerian okay. society? Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot for that question. Uh, be, being a Nigeria, a Nigerian in this 21st century is one of the, let me say, um, it's one of those opportunities that seem to be commonly abused and neglected because of the current state of the country. 
But if you look at it in a real sense, it's real power. That's what I see it as. And there is no better time in history rather than I will ever want to be than being in this very time. The reason being that at this edge of time which we are in, it can actually shape the next generation for the best. This is actually one of the best times because we're in the century and the time of a more advanced technology, access to everything that we want within a split second, you know, with all the entire insecurity and all that. I feel that in this very time, this is a time that we can culture and shape, orient ourselves, our kids, the next generation coming for the best of futures. And how I feel that that can work is through information. And one of the strongest form of informing a people about a thing is nothing else than we have seen in the most recent times than the media. The media is that powerful tool. Once we become more informed about who we are, the next generations are becoming more informed about who they are through our movies, through our comics, with the best thought of technology, with the best form of stories to narrate all these to them, what will begin to happen is there will be a reformation. There will be an establishment of a different mental process, a mental pattern of thinking that is healthy. More than half of our, uh, of, of our, of our population have been wrongly informed and installed with mindsets that have become our setback. And this can only be eradicated through a well-informed platform. And that's why the media is there. And that's why you and I are here with our pens. With We can do the magic. We can actually... Some movies become a revolution. Yes. Some movies, they, they, they turn out to be let that. Me just, let me just loud what you just said. Some movies become a revolution. All right, we can continue. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and and that is what we want to see. For example, during the World War One, let's say World War Two, and the rest, you know, when America were in that fierce battle, that was when Stanley thought about making a superhero who can save America. Now, this is the, now talking about the Nigerian people. During this, uh, what do you call, uh, this entire time that we've been witnessing, this period that we've been witnessing a lot of terrorism, killings, tribal, you know, so many. Now, just imagine a superhero emerges in form of a comics, and I've been working with that. It's called the Fisherman. That's, that's the name. It's so funny. But it's a superhero. It came. The guy was limped with a challenge to what? To save his own people. So I feel that these are the best times that, you know, in the time of chaos, good stories emerge. But the funny thing about it is we don't know how to maximize the story resource. The whites understand how to maximize the story resource. That's why when there is anything bad, as people are complaining, they don't sit back to only complain. They quickly look for a way to send it to the media. Why? It gets a rapt attention from the world. Just imagine having a good superhero that takes care of the insurgency in Nigeria. That will become an internationally attractive storyline. Mm, I mean, mm. it's, 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 it's that serious. So that can begin to put something in the minds of people. Like one of the movies I wrote, Outrageous Mission, is a full written movie. It actually talks about the propaganda of, 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 of terrorism, like uh, terrorism, uh, um, um, uh, yes, and then it's influenced with religion. And that movie addresses that confusion between terrorism and Islam. 
But it's not focused on that. It's actually just focused about the insurgency in the country and how the guy took care of it. It's a movie that I've not picked because it will, it will require lots of money for them to act it. Well-written, outrageous mission. That's, that's the title of the movie. Because I also came from a family that is somehow like one of my uncles. He's a house man because I'm not just coming from a pure tea family. The other side of my family, they're actually Muslims and they're houses. Because my, my grandma had two husbands. So one was a tea man, one was a flunny man. Then, and sometimes okay. we talk. So mm -hmm. I understand about Islam. My dad too would have also been a Muslim. Mm. Now, you can see that it actually addresses politics being confused. And what I would like you to know, somehow sometimes we feel like religion is a touch of what is happening here. But if we look so deep, sometimes it's beyond that. So th these are the things that the movie brings up issues that are very quiet. It touches every aspect of, of what's going on in the country. Now, those are movies, they, they bring up certain issues and they address those issues. Movies that actually come up with a revolution. Now imagine you having a comic book that talks about a child superhero. What if feel will happen? All kids will begin to have that in the schools. Then you start making, um, um, you start mo making models of those superheroes that you've made. That will become the talk of every African child taking them to schools, sending them over to others in, in South Africa, or that will become an attention. Because the insurgency yeah. is becoming a world's concern right now. But we are not capitalizing on these rich stories. We're just focused on love stories. And meanwhile, we know that these days don't 100% exist here that much. Yes, there is love, there is, but all this other as aspect also needs to be touched. That's Can you imagine the Yahoo Boy story? Like, you know, 419 yeah. coming. Okay. In, uh, the superhero <laughs> that maybe is guess, focused on 419. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I, I, walk, <laughs> yeah, I, walk, I walked on a story with my, with my friend, Dr. Wells. I, he... he, he all the says which you're addressing was Dr. Wells, but he's a medical student. And we worked on a story called HX. The mo already the, the name HX is even confusing. I wanted to have it in episodes. The movie is so tactically written. But when we first submitted our first issue to oh, one guy, the guy quickly watered down the story without understanding what we wanted, then changed it into a normal. Nigerian concept. Then quickly we withdraw the story back and said, fine, that's fine. Then got the original ideas with us and we kept the story. We just kept it. Let me, you know, HX is as you watch the movie that you understand the meaning of HX. <laughs> when you watch the movie, you understand why it's called HX. It's like the whole thing is all about, we now, we now go into the world of Yahoo. It's more than what you see, not just about laptops now. It's a large world. We have, we have lords in every territory. And now there is this guy who is a cybersecurity guy that later came in as a subject. We see the changes. Like It became a, a fierce battle in the country. There was a guy trying to tell them that it's and we wanted to just to keep going, like a TV series. We've already done the structure. We've done the structure because that's something. Before you start writing, when you write, you make structures for your movie. So we already did a structure for the first episode, second episode, third episode, fourth episode. We know how it's going to keep being. But we stopped. Now, that's just it. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, we're that, stop like there. it's so amazing to hear, you know. Like you are a, you are a. Uh, how I, what should I say now? A, a river of, of creativity, <laughs> <laughs> basically, <laughs> right? Uh, because it's like all the ideas that come to you, right? From how, from you know, the conversation today, right? You ha you have yeah. a way of ensuring, right, that they are captured into scripts and they become stories that can be told yeah. again. 
right? So yeah. at the end of the day, right, it's about service in the sense of you know, like for you to sit down, write a story and give it to others. You are literally serving others something that was in your head, right? A, a, an imaginative thought. So I think that is really that is really cool and awesome. Um, Jeremiah, Jerry, like I'm sure your name, uh, people might not know your name as much today. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> well, like, Jeremy Hasid. Jeremy Hasid, when well, you get to the course to see Jeremy Hasid, that's my Hebrew name. My Hebrew name is Hasid. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like that name, right? I'm sure in the next five years, um, we'll hear it so loud. Um, I will <laughs> be able to appreciate it so much. Thank oh, you so much for for today, you, sir. for your time, for sharing so much, um, being so generous um, with us. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. And I'm so glad to be on this show. And to all the fans, of this amazing show. I just want to keep sharing, to keep, you know, liking and also, you know, let's spread this word to people. Musa Obed is doing a very great job. This is so incredible. This vision he has is is rare and he's pushing it so hard. And I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited that this is happening right now at this time in history. So, and I know that this blog is gonna be everywhere soon. Like all over the world, it's one uh, of the yeah, biggest yeah. <laughs> blogs that we're gonna see. Like we'll be hearing about. Everyone will want to tune in. Live sessions, live sessions. I'm so, I'm so. And shout out to the entire team. You guys are doing a great job. Yesterday, I even went around and I, I checked a few stories, a few things people have blogged about, and I followed a few episodes it, it has been so interesting a lot of guys are doing great things and they need a voice they need that platform and this is what you're doing it's such an amazing service so thanks a lot sir and thanks for the entire fans here goodbye i'm jeremy <laughs> has yeah. <laughs> jeremy has thank you so much for the kind <laughs> words um you know maybe um, our next one here yeah, is after you i won your oscars i'm like jeremy do you know about that time Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Whoa, that, that would be so be... insane. Oh no, my God. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you so much. Well, have a nice day. And to everybody here at Naruption listening, um, don't forget to share, right? The thing is, so if, if you are never interested in the topic, don't share it to somebody that you know has an interest in it, right? Um, they might yeah. benefit a lot from it, right? Some things that Jeremy said. I'm learning it for the first time. Like, I don't know the first movie, for example, came out in 1926 in Nigeria, right? So, like, there's so many things that can be learned on each episode. Um, so, if you know somebody yeah. that, you know, um, a particular thing is their cup of tea, just share it to them, do that service, and then, you know, we'll see how whatever it is that's being shared can benefit. But thank you guys for listening in. This is Jeremiah Hasid. And as I said, watch out for this guy. Watch out for his name because <laughs> I have so much faith in him and he's just a marvelous fox. So see you guys till next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.